last meeting with Manjusri, Sadhana went to the residence of Bodhisat Vasem and Tabadra, depicted in the fourth gallery. The entire series of the fourth gallery is devoted to the teaching of Sam Tabadra. The narrative panels finally end with Sadhana's achievement of the supreme knowledge and the ultimate truth. Apart from the story of the Buddhist cosmology carved in stone, Bora Buddha has many statues of various Buddhas. The cross-legged statues are seated in a lotus position and distributed on the five square platforms, the Rupadatta level, as well as on the top platform, the Arupadatta level. The Buddha statues are in niches at the Rupadatta level, arranged in rows on the outer sides of the balustrades the number of statues decreasing as platforms progressively diminish to the upper level. The first balustrades of 104 niches, the second 104, the third 88, the fourth 72 and the fifth 64. In total, there are 432 Buddha statues at the Rupadatta level. At the Arupadatta level, or the three circular platforms, Buddha statues are placed inside perforated stupas. The first circular platform has 32 stupas, the second 24 and the third 16, which adds up to 72 stupas. Of the original 504 Buddha statues, over 300 are damaged, mostly headless, and 43 are missing. Since the monument's discovery, heads have been acquired as collector's items, mostly by Western museums. Some of these Buddha heads are now displayed in numbers of museums, such as the Trepen Museum in Amsterdam, Musée Guimet in Paris, and the British Museum in London. At first glance, all the Buddha statues appear similar. But there is a subtle difference between them in the mudras, or the position of the hands. There are five groups of mudra, north, east, south, west, and zeta, which represent the five cardinal compass points according to Mahayana. The first four balustrades have the first four mudras, north, east, south, and west, of which the Buddha statues that face one compass direction have the corresponding mudra. Buddha statues at the fifth balustrades and inside the 72 stupas on the top platform have the same mudra, Zenith. Each mudra represents one of the five Dhyani Buddhas, each has its own symbolism. Outstanding Universal Value Brief Synthesis the Bora Buddha Temple Compounds is one of the greatest Buddhist monuments in the world, and was built in the 8th and 9th centuries and during the reign of the Sailendra dynasty. The monument is located in the Keju Valley, in the southern part of central Java, at the center of the island of Java, Indonesia. The main temple is a stupa built in three tiers around a hill which was a natural center, a pyramidal base with five concentric square terraces, the trunk of a cone with three circular platforms and, at the top, a monumental stupa. The walls and balustrades are decorated with fine low reliefs, covering a total surface area of 2,520 square meters. Around the circular platforms are 72 open work stupas, each containing a statue of the Buddha. The vertical division of Bora Buddha Temple into base, body, and superstructure perfectly accords with the conception of the universe in Buddhist cosmology. It is believed that the universe is divided into three superimposing spheres, Kamadhatu, Rupadhatu, and Arupadhatu representing respectively the sphere of desires where we are bound to our desires, the sphere of forms where we abandon our desires but are still bound to name and form, and the sphere of formlessness where there is no longer either name or form. At Bora Buddha Temple, the Kamadatu is represented by the base, the Rupadatta by the five square terraces, and the Arupadatta by the three circular platforms as well as the big stupa. The whole structure shows a unique blending of the very central ideas of ancestor worship, 
related to the idea of a terraced mountain, combined with the Buddhist concept of attaining nirvana. The temple should also be seen as an outstanding dynastic monument to the Sailendra dynasty that ruled Java for around 5 centuries until the 10th century. The Borobudur Temple compounds consists of three monuments, namely the Borobudur Temple and two smaller temples situated to the east on a straight axis to Borobudur. The two temples are Mendat Temple, whose depiction of Buddha is represented by a formidable monolith accompanied by two bodhisattvas, and Porwan Temple, a smaller temple whose inner space does not reveal which deity might have been the object of worship. Those three monuments represent phases in the attainment of Nirvana. The temple was used as a Buddhist temple from its construction until sometime between the 10th and 15th centuries when it was abandoned. Since its rediscovery in the 19th century and restoration in the 20th century, it has been brought back into a Buddhist archaeological site. Criterion I Borobudur temple compounds with its stepped, unroofed pyramid consisting of ten superimposing terraces, crowned by a large bell-shaped dome is a harmonious marriage of stupas, temple and mountain that is a masterpiece of Buddhist architecture and monumental arts. Criterion 2. Borobudur temple compounds is an outstanding example of Indonesia's art and architecture from between the early 8th and late 9th centuries that exerted considerable influence on an architectural revival between the mid-13th and early 16th centuries. Criterion Vine, laid out in the form of the lotus, the sacred flower of Buddha, Borobudur Temple Compounds is an exceptional reflection of the blending of the very central idea of indigenous ancestor worship and the Buddhist concept of attaining nirvana. The ten mounting terraces of the entire structure correspond to the successive stages that the Bodhisattva has to achieve before attaining to Buddhahood. Integrity The boundaries contain the three temples that include the imaginary axis between them. Although the visual links are no longer open, the dynamic function between the three monuments, Borobudur Temple, Mendat Temple, and Porwan Temple is maintained. The main threat to the ensemble is from development that could compromise the extraordinary relationship between the main monument and its wider setting and could also affect the outstanding universal value of the property. The approach to the property has to a degree already been compromised by weak developmental regulations. Tourism also exerts considerable pressure on the property and its hinterland. There is a growing rate of deterioration of the building stone, the cause of which needs further research. There is also a small degree of damage caused by unsupervised visitors. The eruption of Mount Merapi is also considered as one of the potential threats because of its depositive city cache as happened in 2010. Authenticity The original materials were used to reconstruct the temple in two phases in the 20th century, after the turn of the century and more recently, 1973 to 1983. Mostly original materials were used with some additions to consolidate the monument and ensure proper drainage which has not had any significant adverse impact on the value of the property. Though the present state of Borobudur Temple is the result of restorations, it retained more than enough original material when rediscovered to make a reconstruction possible. Nowadays the property could be used as a Buddhist pilgrimage site. Its overall atmosphere is, however, to a certain degree compromised by the lack of control of commercial activities and the pressure resulting from the lack of an adequate tourism management strategy. Dating the Borobudur Temple is based on artistic comparisons of reliefs and inscriptions found in Indonesia and elsewhere. The period in which the Javanese constructed Borobudur is shrouded in legend and mystery. No records pertaining to its construction or purpose exist, 
and dating the temple is based on artistic comparisons of reliefs and inscriptions found in Indonesia and elsewhere throughout Southeast Asia. Strong cultural and religious influence derived in what is now present-day Indonesia from the Indian subcontinent beginning around the first century. This influence grew rapidly from 400 onwards. Hindu and Buddhist merchants and traders settled in the region, intermarried with the local population, and facilitated long-distance trading relations between the indigenous Javanese and ancient India. Over the centuries, the Javanese blended the culture and religions of ancient India with their own. The name Borobudur itself is the subject of intense scholarly debate and is a lingering mystery. Some scholars contend that the name stems from the Sanskrit Vihara Buddha or the Buddhist monastery on a hill, while others, in turn, argue that Buddha is nothing more than a Javanese place name. The stone tablet dating from 842 makes mention of the Mizamrabhu Dara or the Mountain of Virtues of Ten Stages of the Bodhisattva. It is probable that the name Borobudur could be related to Barabhu Dara. Modern historians have all disagreed amongst each other as to the political and cultural events that led to Borobudur's construction as well. It is possible that the Hindu Sanjaya dynasty initially began construction of a Shivite temple on the spot where Borobudur now sits around 775 and that they were unable to complete their temple as they were driven out of the area by the Sailendra dynasty. It should be noted, however, that other Javanese historians see the Sailendra and Sanjaya dynasties as one and the same family and that religious patronage simply changed as a result of personal belief. The general consensus is that there were two rival dynasties supporting different faiths. Archaeological and scholarly consensus places the end of Borobudur's construction around 800 to 825 CE. King Samara Tunga is traditionally regarded as the Javanese king who oversaw the completion of Borobudur's construction. Buddhist kings, like Samara Tunga, were the rivals of the Hindu Sanjaya dynasty for power within the Mataram kingdom in central Java. The Hindu Javanese under the Sanjaya dynasty constructed Prambanan, Indonesia's largest Hindu temple, located some 19 kilometers, 12 miles, to the west of Borobudur, in the same century as Borobudur, and it is entirely possible that Pranbanan's construction was a political and cultural response to that of Borobudur. The temple of Borobudur or sometimes Barabudur is a Mahayana Buddhist temple located close to Muntilan on the island of Java in Indonesia. Built during the rule of the Sailendra dynasty 6501025, Borobudur remains the world's largest Buddhist temple. The Buddhists among the Javanese population performed pilgrimages and other rituals at Borobudur until around the 14th and 15th centuries CE when the temple was abandoned as many Javanese converted to Islam. Rediscovered in 1814, Borobudur has since then been the subject of immense research and archaeological investigations by the Dutch and Javanese. UNESCO designated Borobudur as a World Heritage Site in 1991 following a restoration in the 1970s and 1980s overseen by UNESCO, and the iconic temple continues to play a powerful role in shaping Indonesian aesthetics, architecture, and cultural identity. Borobudur is the most visited tourist site in Indonesia.